welcome back once again to our little trip to Minecraft land. I'm going to pick up almost right where I left off. It is now the morning. I've done a little tiny bit of digging at night. And uh, see, morning's just coming up. There. And, uh, whoa, lag. Um, you can see I've tiled the floor with stone. I dug down below and got exactly 49 blocks of stone to replace the 49 blocks of dirt that were on top and filled it back in with the dirt that I took out of the top. So, no real change. Just, uh, and I, uh, made some tools, cooked some meat. So, just waiting for that sun to come up. There's a couple skeletons out there in the distance I wanted to burn. I don't want to get shot with arrows. <laughs> come on, son. Come on. Yeah? You can do it. <laughs> no matter what game I play, I'm victim to the friggin' time cycles. Uh, Skyrim has a, uh, Skyrim. I always call it that. It's not. It's Skyrim. Skyrim. It's, it sounds like it should... I don't know. I, I want it to be not Skyrim because it sounds kind of boring, but... <laughs> Skyrim has a um, day and night cycle, and while I appreciate the realism, I I, I, I abhor whoa. I uh, <laughs> okay. I I hate the uh, the fact that like the shops in the game close at night, and like several times I run into a door, and instead of opening it, it'll just like start the lock picking animation. I'm not trying to pick the lock. I want to go inside normally. Not that it does any good. Like, breaking into a store doesn't help you. Like, all the inventory of a shopkeeper is never actually in their store. The way the game works is it keeps all that stuff in, like, some hidden invisible chest. Probably, like, below the floor. Or it might even be in a different cell, for all I know. But it's just, it's kind of ass backwards. Like, you'd think, you know, it would be on them or in their shop. Because, like, there's even a, uh, a little, like, tip thing in one of the loading screens that say, um, uh, most shops are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. But, uh, if you need something, you could either wait till morning or just pick the lock. It's like you can actually go in and get what you need. But it doesn't quite work that way. One of the real flaws of the game, I think they should include the, uh, the shopkeeper's chest in an identifiable area. If their inventory comes... Because all... Any shopkeeper's inventory is never on them, because they carry way too much. They'd be encumbered as players. Or as, I, don't know if, I don't know if NPCs get encumbered. I don't think they do. But there's a limit to, like, how many physical items they can fit in an NPC inventory. Like, so shopkeepers have all their inventory in a chest, and the game references that chest whenever they're, whenever you're shopping. As for what's available to purchase. Which, you know, I suppose it's a nice workable solution, except for the fact that it seems unrealistic that you can't find their inventory in their store. A lot of things like that in the game. Skyrim's got a... Uh, Elder Scroll games in general have a bad habit of, like, going ultra-realistic in one direction, and then, like, totally breaking it in another... Uh, one of the more recent complaints I've heard and sympathized with is they took out um, the ability to battle underwater. Like, you can't even pull out your weapon. And while I understand that it's ridiculous to begin with because you're carrying around, like, 200 pounds of iron armor, you're not going to be swimming to start with. Uh, but, you know, if, if they're going to let you swim with that much weight, they should let you pull out your dagger or sword and slash underwater. You know, maybe the damage rate is reduced. Maybe your attack just are really slow. But they should still let you do it. I mean, people, you know, can use daggers in water in real life, too. I mean, it's just, it's a slow movement because you're in water. Well, not really. I mean, water's not that slow. But, I mean, if these guys can run around in their heavy armor and carry, you know, 8,000 cabbages with them. <laughs> seems like it, uh... Speaking of, you know, I think about cabbages because I'm trying to set up a farm here. And, uh, like, you have food in Skyrim, but you don't have to actually eat. Like, there's no dietary requirements in the game. And it seems kind of ironic sometimes the way the, uh, like, 
you'll stop battle flow and hold on I need to check my inventory you go in your inventory and you down a few dozen heads of cabbage or apples or whatever your food you have on you whether it's soup or whatever I don't know how you transport soup vast quantities of soup I don't know so they have like bowls in your inventory. It's like, really? Am I just carrying these around magically? Or is it like thick gelatinous porridge so that it doesn't pour out of the bowl? I don't know what's going on with that. It's like, like I said, it's, it's, you go too far with some realism and then totally break it with others. It's just a flaw in Elder Scrolls. Because I get it, you know, the world is trying to generate they're trying to generate this believable world that feels alive and like it's got purpose and you know you can craft and cook and smith and mine and you can smelt you can get wheat and turn it into flour not that it serves any purpose at all but you can do it <laughs> and so it's just like one of those things that like i don't know it doesn't seem to do anything and other things like uh, there's like target dummies and like little target areas and you know for like people to train swords on and arrows and all over the game but if you shoot at them you don't actually get improvements to your skill so it's like well what's the point of having a practice dummy if hitting it does no good I guess the game I don't know, it's little flaws like that little oh I hear an egg little tiny mishaps with um, you know the realism like don't push realism in one degree and then fail in others it kind of bothers me a lot it's like an incomplete thought it's like you know I, you know I like and then not saying what you like it's like come on really I mean is this, this what we're come down to nowadays it's kind of don't get me wrong, I love the game. I still play the game. I play lots and lots of and lots of the game. I mean, it makes up the majority of my video gaming stuff because since I only play about 15 minutes of Minecraft a day, I don't exactly play much else at the moment. I, I still have Sims installed on my computer, but uh, I kind of got tired of the house building. I wanted to take a break. I recently uninstalled a lot of things from my computer. I had. Um, Dead Island, uh, Command and Conquer, I had, um, uh, if you ever played, um, what's it called, <sighs> my mind's drawing a blank here, um, it's a Diablo type game, um, Torchlight, Torchlight, uh, it's like a, one of the, it was like Diablo 3 before Diablo 3, or is Diablo 3 even out yet, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that sort of thing. I'm not gonna buy it, and I don't feel like pirating it either because it's just. I'm sure it's great, but the idea of the continual um, dungeon crawly, no ending games. I know I'm playing Skyrim, it's almost the exact same thing. <laughs> and Minecraft, but it's just. I played a lot of Diablo 2 when it came out, and it was it was great. But it, and then I played like Baldur's Gate, and I played the um, Champions of Norath, the, you know, the, the PS games, and those other Snowblind or whatever they were called, uh, Snowblind or Snow. Or was it, it was like Blizzard, but it wasn't Blizzard. Snow something in the title of the uh, the company that made it. Anyways, and they were real pretty, and they were, you know, they were just your traditional explore this area, you know, takes little tiny quests. They were Diablo ripoffs. The whole thing was Diablo ripoffs. That's all it was. Hey, iron. And it's just, it got old. I mean, the, the limitation of the systems, the lack of dynamics, just runs it for me. There's not enough world interaction. Like, all you're doing is fighting and going through procedurally generated dungeons. There's no, you know, my actions have a real impact kind of thing. Which, I mean, in like, um, there's not a whole lot of impact in Skyrim or, uh, but Minecraft has a huge impact. Because, I mean, you are your world in Minecraft. So it's like, you 
can do anything you want if you've got the time and the patience. And you know, like my, one of my favorite things was to, uh, you know, even occasionally there were times I would just like hack in like mountains of TNT into the game and then just blow everything to smithereens. It was a, uh, it was a fun way to go. But, uh, but just you know, Minecraft is that way. Uh, Skyrim, you can sort of change your landscape, you can, you know, make positive changes to some environments, and, like, there's a civil war that takes place in the game, and depending on which side you choose will alter some of the political landscape. Not that it has any true bearing on the game, because, other than a few quests that get glitched out because they don't understand what to do afterwards, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Like everything just sort of continues on as it was, and there's a few NPCs that say nasty things to you afterwards, and which I like. I mean, there's a lot of uh, NPC interaction that uh, wasn't really there in previous games. Like, they know who you are, they, they recognize your skills, they recognize what you've done, to some degree. Um, like, the, uh, the wizards and uh, the various castle wizard guys, uh, head wizard people, that each main city has its own head wizard that serves the ruler, like very Merlin to, to Arthur kind of style, and um, like after you become like the head wizard from like the, co the, uh, the it's called the College of Winterhold instead of the Mages Guild in uh, this version of Elder Scrolls because According to the lore, the Mages Guild is sort of like kaput, they're out of business or something. The uh, the major war that took place prior to the start of, the, of this version of Elder Scrolls sort of destroyed the Fighters Guild and the, uh, and the Thieves Guild and everything's just sort of in disarray. The, everything's gone, the Mages are gone, the Dark Brotherhood's dying, everything's gone. And so it's like, not only are you fighting off dragons and saving the world, you're like resuscitating all the guilds that existed too so it's kind of interesting the game's got a lot of that that uh stuff <laughs> I don't know I'm running out of shit to talk about here this is like my third take because my audio kept fucking up <laughs> and I don't know if I'm remembering everything I was supposed to talk about or not uh, god dang, it's night already. For some reason, the monsters don't seem to come right up next to my house. I wonder if it's because I don't have any torches outside. Not that I want them up next to my house, that, but it's just, it's unpleasant. I want to kill that sheep so bad. So I need to get shears first. As soon as I have shears, I will cut your wool off. And I can make a bed. And then I'll start play, recording like two day cycles instead of one day cycles. Make my videos about 20 minutes long. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.